All right, so before this video gets started, I want to tell you guys thank you so much. Um, creeping up on my way to 6,000 subscribers, growing consistently, even with the lack of videos, I'm still getting a ton of love. So I want to tell you thank you to everyone who's followed my videos, watched my videos, subscribed to the channel. You greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you're just watching this, watch the whole video, subscribe afterwards. You'll see why a lot of people are starting to like my videos more and more. Hopefully, you become a part of the crew. But let's get into the video now. YouTube Stan your boy back with another upload another video as promised in a whole different place whole different country and I'm gonna explain that right now in the video real quick uh, if you didn't watch my last video uh, I'm in the Navy and I am now forward deployed uh, overseas but I'm not gonna stop making videos um, this is a topic that I've got a lot of questions about if you're watching this video uh, you probably want some information about it um, and it's about the LT4 conversion on an SS Camaro. Uh, so I have a 2017 1LE SS Camaro. Uh, like I said, 1LE package. So if you have a standard SS, there are a few other things that I would recommend, but this is just kind of a general video uh, of how that experience was for me. So like I said, this video is about the LT4 conversions because I've got a lot of people asking me questions in the last video and just on Instagram and stuff of how did the conversion go or uh, why I'm not doing X, Y, and Z or what should they do. So this is what this video is about. The biggest thing about the LT4. So let me start from scratch. I had the plan of putting an LT4 supercharger off of a ZL1 onto my SS Camaro. Um, especially it being a 1LE, it's basically a regular ZL1 without the supercharger and the powertrain that comes with it. So uh, I like factory stock style setups. So like when people put LSA superchargers on like a newer truck, that generation truck didn't come with the LSA supercharger but the CTSVs and the ZL1s did. I like stuff like that. Same thing if you put them on like Chevrolet SS's. That car should have came with the supercharger. I like factory stock style stuff. Um, so for me putting the LT4 on was like the ultimate version of what an SS1 Elite could have been. Or should should have been. Could have been. I mean GM could have done it. Obviously they wouldn't because then what's the point of having the ZL1 uh, but uh, that's what that car has the potential to be. Anyways, I purchased a LT4 supercharger from a gentleman and local to me that has a, an amazing uh, ZL1 1LE, ZL1 1LE, um, and he put a, at the time, he put a Whipple supercharger on his car. Uh, this is the key to what I think is having a, a successful Air LT4 build. You have to be able to buy the supercharger for relatively cheap. I'll go ahead and say it. I bought my supercharger with the two auxiliary uh, heat exchangers and the main heat exchangers. I had all three uh, heat exchangers that come from a Z01. I paid $1,500 for it. Now, I will tell you, you won't use one of those auxiliary coolers because I believe the SS's have it too, but I know the 1LE's have an auxiliary heat exchanger for uh, the other systems that it cools. So you don't have to use one. Uh, you just add the other one and you add the big heat exchanger in front of the radiator. Uh, so I paid 1500 Like I said, that is the key to making this package affordable, reasonable, because I'm not going to say it's just super affordable, super cheap, because it's not. 
the main question I get asked is, is it worth it instead of buying something else? And I'll answer that towards the end of the video. The other thing that I learned and I'm going to share right now is you have to, in my opinion, it is better to buy the complete kits as a whole. So I attempted to piece it together. Obviously you have to buy the superchargers. You can buy it from the people that sell the kits. Uh, Weapon X, you can buy it from there. Uh, the website that I was using was LSA Conversions, which is now C8 Parts. And I'm gonna put that on the screen so you can see it. They were LSA Conversions because they were one of the first people to come up with LSA, LSA kits for all the vehicles that an LSA could go on. Um, now they're C8 Parts because they sell a whole bunch of C8 Parts, but uh, I believe you get an email still from LSA Conversion, so it's the same people, same company. Uh, I emailed them. Um, they gave me the complete parts list for everything that you would need to do the conversion. So they're not trying to hide it. They're not trying to make you buy anything. Most of the parts that I needed that were knickknack, I bought from them anyway. Uh, since I work at the dealership, if you don't know, I work at a GMC Cadillac dealership with access to Chevy as well. Um, I bought anything that was I did a lot of shopping like I would check with my parks guy see what his price was and go shop online stuff like that so I pieced it all together got everything put it together um, and to me that is the hardest part because if you don't obviously if you buy a kit they're gonna give you everything you need to install even though they gave me a list the list might say uh, bracket like whatever bracket it is but their version of the bracket and the bracket that you're gonna buy are two different things because in their kit they're gonna offer it different than the actual bracket like one of them is the heat exchanger pump there's a bracket that it sits on inside the car um, on a Z01 and a CTSV it sits just like it like floats in the engine bay almost the, the pump does on a bracket uh, on the SS's they have that same bracket, but just not the ears that come off of it to hold the pump. And in my situation, I wasn't trying to dr drop the cradle. But to change that bracket, you have to drop the cradle to change a bracket. It's two bolts that hold it in. You have to drop the whole front cradle of your car to put this bracket in. Now, companies like Whipple, uh, Magnuson, everyone else, they just make their own pump, make their own bracket, put it somewhere else, and they don't do that. Which makes perfect sense because that's what comes with a kit is they do the R&D and figure out well if a guy's trying to do this at home obviously he can't drop his cradle I was at Attitude Streetcars with their list when I was doing it and I did attempt to drop the cradle so I did make the effort but it just wasn't worth it um, I was by, there by myself as well and I didn't want to I wasn't taking the car apart that deep anyway I was just trying to put the supercharger on and I didn't think that that bracket would be such a hassle so my word of advice to anyone watching this is buy the complete kit whether it is the weapon x version or the lsa conversions version or whatever kit are out there those are the two that i was shopping from i think there might be a third or fourth but those are the two best to me um lsa conversions and weapon x uh, they both have complete lt4 supercharger swap kits like I said, the biggest thing is you have to buy buy the complete kit. Uh, like I said, I was trying to figure out what way I could save money here and go around here and get stuff because I have I have the ability to get stuff at a good price via my dealership, my job, uh, Attitude Streetcars, and if you just email these companies, sometimes they'll just be nice enough to send you stuff. Uh, so don't be afraid to email them or ask them if they have any coupon codes or anything uh, because if they do they're gonna give it to you so they can earn your business uh, because once they earn your business you'll shop with them again uh, it's about building that customer base that's what I do at my job and if any company is doing good business they'll do that for you as well the main question I've been getting asked is is the LSA or LT4 conversion worth it? And in my honest opinion, is it worth the cost to put that LT4, which is a 1.7 liter supercharger, uh, on, I mean, any car that do it doesn't come with, for the cost it's gonna cost, it, the, for the cost it's gonna accrue, no. 
I love it if if I had bought the whole kit and did the things that I just recommended to you, would I still put it on? Yes. I will send it to Kong and get it ported and just balls to the wall. I'll do everything I could. But the question I keep getting asked is, is it worth it? And no, it is not worth it. Uh, Money-wise, like I said, you're going to pay at least $1,500 for a supercharger. The, one I, the supercharger I bought had 3,500 miles on it. Um, it came off of a... 1801 um, 3500 miles very I mean you opened up the lid and it looked perfect um, so even then I got a I feel like I got a good deal on my supercharger now if you find one where somebody's selling it for 500 bucks because they live in Alaska and they can't get rid of it then buy it then you're then the game's different but I think the odds of that happening are very slim um, because they know you want the the supercharger and there's not a whole bunch of them there's floating around they go pretty quick like if you're on the uh, blogs and forums like Camaro6.com they're up and then they're gone um, a lot of people are starting to use them for the trucks the new trucks because uh, they've got good kits for those now uh, for the Escalades because um, those things run pretty hard especially since they have the 10 speed in them now they run pretty hard with the LT4 supercharger on so it's not just the Camaro guys uh, and CTSV guys, well, CTSV guys don't need it. It's not just mainly the Camaro guys shopping for them anymore. Now the truck and SUV people are, are jumping on them. Um, so uh, that is going to be your first step. And then to buy a proper kit, it's going to cost you forty-five hundred, four grand bare minimum. That's if you buy, or thirty-five hundred. That's if you buy just the kit and nothing else, like no balancer no fuel system no upgraded radiators nothing that's just getting the kit to put the supercharger on a stock car and let it run um, they're like 3500 from C8 parts I believe and like I said that's that's nothing they offer some good upgrades weapon X has a few other bigger upgrades um, that's just slapping the LT4 on and starting the car up I mean obviously tuning but uh, so you're looking at five grand, just bare minimum. In my case, for a fifteen hundred dollar supercharger, you're looking at five grand. So you compare that to a supercharger where you're stuck at no more than five hundred. Uh, I mean, without the fuel system, without anything, that supercharger won't make more than five hundred. Um, where you can spend sixty five hundred on a pro charger. And now, before I say this, I'm not the biggest fan of Pro Chargers on the 6th Gen Camaros. But they do work. Uh, just not for me personally. But, I even looked at it after and I was like, I could have just bought a Pro Charger. And the car will be running with the Pro Charger. And Pro Chargers for our cars are pretty easy to put on. So, you can spend 6500 is What is it? You get a P1SC or whatever. Uh, super, supercharger head. Uh, it goes on very easily uh, it goes off very easily if you want to switch the head units out to the bigger ones to I'm pretty sure you can put a D1 and a D1X on that same bracket maybe um, that that whole setup can carry you far now my goal was to build a max effort LT4 Camaro um, or SS and max effort to me on that on an LT4 is about 850 to 900 I mean, either way, you're gonna, you're not saving money with the LT4. Is what I'm trying to say. You're not saving money, so because the cost to get to 900 with the LT4 and the cost to get to 900 with whatever Pro Charger head you have, it's gonna be the same. And then really, once you get the Pro Charger stuff, like the initial cost, all you're doing is swapping out head units and swapping pulleys. Uh, the LT4, you're gonna have to get it ported. You're gonna have to. I mean, you're going to have to touch the engine regardless on any setup, so that's something you have to consider too. Um, but I think with the Pro Charger, or not just Pro Charger, but I'm using that as an example because that's the cheapest entry level supercharger. I mean, I like Vortex. If I were to pick, I'd pick a Vortex supercharger. Um, but they don't offer quite, I mean, they do because my buddy Greg has an, an amazing Vortex supercharger on LE. But they don't offer as many 
I guess you could say uh, options as Pro Charger because Pro Charger's got like six, seven different head units. Um, so, I mean, the Vortec has two that I know work really good. The first one Greg had and the one he has now, the YSI, and it makes a lot of power. So I know Vortec, if, if I had to pick a centrifugal, I would pick Vortec, not Pro Charger. That's just my opinion. Um, if I had a Corvette, I'd probably pick a Pro Charger. If I had a something else, Pro Charger might be right. I just don't like them on the 16 Camaros. Really don't have a reason why. I just like to be different sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, and I say Pro Charger again and again because I just had a conversation with a guy on Instagram about it and that's why this video came about. Um, so, to answer the question one more time, is the LT4 conversion worth it? If you like it, yes. If you know you're gonna be capped and limited by a lot of things, not just a few things, then yes. If you go in knowing that, it's worth it. But in general, most people will say it's not worth it, and I have to agree. Um, I could have just spent the extra $2,000 and bought a whip. Simple install, can make 800 horsepower with that supercharger easy without doing anything crazy to it. Um, so uh, that's the things you got to look at. I've learned with my truck that it's better just to do it right the first time. Now, like I said, if I would have bought the kits complete and whole, I would have spent more money, but it probably would have worked out better for me. That's another learning experience that I'm sharing with you guys. Not to say the LT4 isn't worth it, like I said, um, I still have it and what we're gonna do with it is going to be pretty awesome. Um, what I'm gonna do with my car without the LT4 will be awesome, but the LT4, I'm keeping it. I'm not, I'm not getting rid of it because I believe in it. And the motto that I said if I like factory stock stuff, kind of in line with what I'm gonna do with that, with that supercharger. So, and plus it works good. My dad's CTSV, it's a monster, and it's LT4 monster. I mean, that's what it is. So, uh, I hope that answers your question. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. I just wanted to make sure I gave whoever's watching this video as much information as you possibly can have before you make that decision. Um, because it can be done and they're great. it's a great setup. It can be, it can be very affordable, but to build it affordable, you're not going to be happy. And that's just my honest opinion. You're not going to be happy. You're going to be like what I told the other guy. You're going to be like, dang, I could have saved the other 1500 Because if you can save five grand, you can save an extra 1500 on top of it. Now, if you're saying two grand versus 6500 that's $4,000 worth of difference. Some people can't make that gap up. But if you can get to the point where you can save $5,000 to buy a supercharger and buy a kit, then you can save the extra $1,500 and just go the routes I'm telling you, which are more complete exact kits because you got to think the LT4 is made for a ZL1 you're making it work on an SS these companies have developed stuff that'll make it work but like the Whipple you get a ZL1 supercharger and an SS supercharger the blower is the same but the parts that they come with are completely different uh, same thing with the Magnuson 2650 and that and the ZL1 the SS and the ZL1 they make you pick the option because they're two different kits um, so uh, that's what you got to keep in mind is you're making you're you're making the LT4 work on the SS where on the other kits those kits are already made to work so the choice is yours on which one you think is best for you I just want to share that information with you guys like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure you subscribe. I appreciate all the love I've been getting, uh, the comments, uh, the views, everything. It's been great. Um, as you can see behind me, I've got Call of Duty going. I have some videos of that. Next month, parts are going to start rolling for the other projects I have back at home. Even though I won't be able to touch them for a while, you guys are still going to be a part of the parts and the whole process to both builds because I'm going to have both of them up and running when I get back uh, or both projects neither one of them will be running when I get back <laughs> but uh, the truck will actually be done first it'll be very simple uh, to do and then we'll rock hard on the Camaro 
Um, so be on the lookout for that. Make sure you keep watching the, the videos that come after this. Like I said, some of them will be different. They'll have different content, but it'll be fun. Uh, I'm here, and I still want to make videos for you guys. Uh, so hopefully you appreciate it. Hopefully you got a little knowledge in your brain. Uh, so chew on that. And if you have any questions, drop them down below. Uh, like I said, I've been answering them, so I'm not going to stop now. Uh, everybody have a good day. Thank you.